Okay, so we're just going to start off with a very simple shelf to pyro explosion before we do any big explosion. Because as I mentioned before, you don't want to complicate stuff when you're just starting out. So what we just will be doing is just create a sphere. So maybe zoom out a little bit. Go to the pyro effects tab. Let's do an explosion. Just a, the basic explosion. We just have something to uh, to work with. So I'm gonna have this explosion. Quite a simple explosion, but should be good enough for us to uh, to work with and develop our effect further. So let's just maybe cache this out. So we have this pyro import here. All right, so let's remove this thing. So this will be our pyro import. Now let's see what do we need. Well, we won't be using the rest fields for this uh, because we will be rendering in Redshift and Redshift doesn't, uh, cannot use rest fields for, for like uh, displacement of your pyro simulation later on. And also, well, you might do it if you're using another render engine maybe, uh, but keep in mind, we will be rebuilding our volume uh, in our flip from and, and like the more fields you will include, the heavier this will get. So I recommend don't like only using the bare minimum. So if we don't need these rest fields, let's just remove them for now. So we don't need, don't need CD. We will, don't need fuel. Only thing we need is heat, temperature, velocity, and density. So as you can see, we kind of, we don't have the, uh, the colors in our, uh, seen anymore. So what we maybe want to do is do a volume visualizer. So volume visualization. This will allow you to uh, to set up your visualization. So that's on there. Go to the drop down menu and go to density. So you can see now our density shows up. Maybe you want to do a light. So just a general Houdini light in the lights tab. Control click area light. So then at least we can see some shadows in the viewport. Now we can see we have some shadows in the viewport, just a little bit easier to look at. Of course, we will be deleting this later and start using redshift lights, but for now, let's do it like this. Now go to emission and let's put the emission to heat. Let's put the emission and color. Uh, by the way, I think we need for the visualization, I think we need to do this with temperature and then this with heat and let's use physical black body you can just have a look what it looks like you could use both temperature or heat for whatever you're doing um for the rendering we'll be using heat yeah just let's just use it like this maybe but right, so now we have a very simple effort of explosion. And what you can do here is you can increase the density, for example. You can see this is quite a low resolution simulation. That's completely fine for now, because again, we want to keep it fast and simple when we are doing, just when we are doing our R&D. So maybe we, let's cache this out. Let's put a file cache. And again, I'm using these presets. Again, you get those in the downloads. So that's also explained in here. They should be in your downloads. So let's delete our start and end frame. Let's only sim up until frame 60 because what we will be doing is after about 50 frames, we will be converting this into a flip simulation. So we don't need a very long simulation. You could do a longer simulation if you want, if you, you know, like, if you fancy a, a fancy simulation and just want to look at it. But Remember, we're gonna do a high resolution simulator and only the 60 frames will already probably be about an hour of simulation time, depending on your uh, your system settings, like if you have a fast computer or not. So let's just call this Pyro Sim. Just do it version one. And it's set to dollar job. So we need to define our dollar job. We haven't done that yet. So I'll go to file, set project, and let's set our dollar job at our dollar hip. So now this will evaluate to wherever our hip file is, which is in the RD folder. Let's save. Now let's just save to disk and sim this out. Oops. 
Okay, so let's have a look at it. So we have a simulation, it's loading from disk now. And you can see this is this is still not, not that big. But you might imagine that if we get a much larger sim, that this might get a little bit big. So maybe what we want to do is because we want to sort of avoid overheads uh, as much as we can. You can generally, you can also compress fluids, uh, fluid uh, simulations. Oh, a, a pyro sim is also a, a fluid sim. So just a pyro simulation, you can compress it. So what you can do is if you type compress, you can say volume compress. And generally you would want to do this before you cache, but now we have this cache and we can just e easily uh, see what's going on here. And then we'll later cache, cache it again. But, all right. So right now you can see not really a lot is happening. So let's say update compression settings. We can have a whole bunch of uh, settings that we can do here. So let's say, for example, use 16 bit floats. So that should already make quite a bit of difference. So you can see that halves the size. And generally, it's sort of, you don't really notice a lot of difference. Like if I put it in here, enable, disable it, doesn't really make a lot of difference. So uh, if you don't know what this means, 16 bit floats, um, generally a float value, um, well, a, a float value can use either 16 bits or 32 bits. And that just depends on how many, uh, uh, how many numbers can be after a decimal. So an easy way to demonstrate this, and this will only work if you're on Houdini 18 or up. Like if you go in here, uh, like, like make your grid, go into your geometry spreadsheet. And you can see here are our position information. And this is now just general 16 bit floats. So it has a couple of numbers after the decimal, but we can go in a few and then full precision. And you can see now we get a whole bunch of extra information. So sometimes you really need this. Like if you're working in a very big scene scale, for example, and you really need uh, all of this extra information because the information might not be enough to, to contain all of this information. Sort of similar, like if you have an image, you have bending in your image. If you don't know what bending is, bending is essentially, for example, if you have a, uh, if you have, let's say, if I, I Google bending here, let's say this is a, uh, a color gradient. And if it's if an 8-bit gradient, like if we go from this color to this color, and I don't have enough information, I cannot make this, this transition properly. But if I do have more information and I can make this transition properly, well, sort of similar with like attributes. Uh, sometimes you might need this extra, uh, like these extra floats to, to sort of properly do your simulation or whatever you're trying to do. But for what, for what we're trying to do here with volumes, do we really need all of that, all of that um, information? I'd say we probably don't because what we will be doing with this is is later we will be uh, converting it into flip simulations. Uh, so we're going to go through points. So and then we're going to convert it back to volumes uh, anyway. And we don't uh, you don't really see a lot of difference if if we if we go the sixteen or thirty two bit route. So if you generally if you just use sixteen bit floats, you generally don't see a lot of uh, of difference. So turn that on. And maybe we want to set up some different uh, compression for different volumes. For example, we could say that maybe we want to compress our density, heat, and temperature uh, the way we are right now. Maybe we want our velocity because our velocity uh, has three components, X, Y, and Z. So velocity makes it quite a bit heavier. Like for example, if I were to delete my velocity, so if I just go in here, Go over here and I delete my velocity. So delete. If I put a star here, then it will delete that. You can see just deleting the velocity more than halves what we're doing here. So let's put it in here. So if we delete it in here, you can see only 3.69 megabytes is left from whatever we're doing here. But we do want the velocity because we need it for motion blur. But do we really need super accurate motion blur or do we really need to carry over the velocity super accurately from our private simulation into our clip simulation? 
I don't think so. So what we could do is say that we want this volume compressed to be on our, uh, just, our just our base, so on density, heat, temperature. Copy another one, and let's do this one on our velocity. And put the star so it works on all of our velocities. And let's work on our compression. So we can turn up these sliders. You can see. Let's turn this off. So over here it will be 13 megabytes. And it will be six megabytes. So that's because of these settings. So if I turn this down again. So it already gets smaller because of the 16-bit floats. Again, if I don't do that, it's bigger. 16-bit floats makes it smaller. And then basically doing this will, will also just make the uh, the whole thing smaller in general. So what we can do is just maybe if we want to try this out, if we put down a scatter, scatter some points in our density. So go in here, do it on our density. Let's turn off relax iterations for it. So we get some points. Now do volume trail. What volume trail will do is it will trail our point based on a input velocity. So if we put our velocity in the second input, and then say that we want to use our velocity. Okay, so now it's trailing. You see, making trail so we can sort of visualize this velocity based on what we're doing. And so what we can generally what we can do is I mean we can. If we, if we play with these these values, I mean, do you really see a little difference in your visualization? I don't really think so. I mean, a little bit. I mean, it's going to be less accurate. Like if I really crank it up, it's not going to have all of the information. But you no, know, it's 16-bit. I mean, there there's some difference, but is it really? Uh, I mean, right now we're under like five megabytes. We went from 15 megabytes all the way to five megabytes. Well, I'd say we can probably get away with compressing the, the, the velocity quite a bit. And again, right now, this is not really that big, but keep in mind, we will later, um, we will really be dealing with volumes that are a couple of hundred megabytes per frame. So they will be really big. So then this is really going to make a very big difference. So is what we want to do. So now that I sort of explained this whole process of compressing your volumes, let's just cache those in. So because I mean, right now I was just doing this on our cache because uh, then it was just easy to to explain. So I I wouldn't have to worry about losing this cache. But what we can just do is just append it like this. Now let's save it out. So again, we have this. So we go look in here. Right now, this cache. For 60 frames, it's 412 megabytes. Let's save it out again. Turn on initialize simulation. If you turn that on, it will initialize the simulation underneath and it won't write out the already cached stuff. So we save it out and just see the difference. If you want to do, maybe we can version up. Here we can sort of see the difference easier. So let's save a second version, save it out, see the difference. One hundred and fifty-two megabytes. So, quite a big difference, right? So, if we go through the two, you can really see that much of a difference. So, anyway, so now we have a much smaller cache, only a couple of megabytes. Still have the same simulation. So now that we have this, what we can do is maybe now start, um, yeah, converting this thing to a flip simulation. 